Krishna. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Kopi Janna Vallabha Kirivara Dari Kopi Janna Vallabha Kirivara Dari Yashoranandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoranandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Yamuna Tera Vanachari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Pati Raja Kachari Ashtotra Shata Shri Shri Maharaj Divine Grace Sesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Pati Raja Kachari Ashtotra Shata Shri Shri Maharaj Divine Grace Sesi Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada Ki Jai Anantakoti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Namachari Shri Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Prem Sikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Kupa Kupa Nasham Kun Radha Kun Giri Kavadan Ki Jai Vrinda Vandam Ki Jai Navadit Dham Ki Jai Ganga Yamunamaya Ki Jai Tosi Maharani Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Nugovardhan Dham Ki Jai all glories to the sum of devotees, all glories to the sum of devotees, all glories to the sum of devotees, all glories to Shri Guru and Shri Guranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, titled The Creative Impetus, Chapter 19, The Island of Jambadweep, Text 9. You did Text 8 yesterday, right? Okay. So what should we do? Should I just chant it, or should we repeat word by word, or I'll just chant it? Okay. All right. Bharate pi varshe. Bhagavan nara. Narayana ikya. Akhal pantum. Upachitta. Dharmagyana. Vairagyaishvaryo. 
Pashamo param Atmo palam Banam That's a long word. Right? That's a long word. Vairagishvaro pashamo param Atmo palam Banam That's a long word. Anugrahaya Atmavatam Anukampaya to, Tapo Jakta Katish Charity Okay, Bharate Now what should we do? I just read the translation? Alright, I'm going to read the word by words myself So Bharate in Bharat Api also Varshe, the Chakt of Land Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Nara Narain Akyaha, known as Nara Narain, A Kalpa Antam, up to the end of the millennium, Upachitta, increasing Dharma, religion, jnana, knowledge, vairagya, renunciation or non attachment. Aishvarya, mystic opulences, Upashama, control of the senses, Uparama. Freedom from false ego, atma upa lambanam, self-realization, anu, anugrahaya, to show favor, atma vatam, unto persons interested in self-realization, anukampaya, by causes mercy, tapaha, austerities, of yakta gatihi, whose glories are inconceivable, chariti executes. Translation, commentary by Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Shukadeva Goswami continued, The glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are inconceivable. He has appeared in the form of Nara Narayan in the land of Bharat Varsha at the place known as Badrik Ashram to favor his devotees by teaching them religion, knowledge, renunciation, spiritual power, sense control, and freedom from false ego. He is advanced in the opulence of spiritual assets, and he engages in executing austerity until the end of this millennium. This is the process of self-realization. Purport. People in India may visit the temple of Nara Narayan at Baddhik Ashram just to learn how the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his incarnation as Nara Narayan engages in austerities. Thank you. Engages in an austerities to teach the people of the world how to achieve self-realization. It is impossible to realize oneself simply by observing one's, absorbing oneself in speculation and material activities. One must be very serious about self-realization and the practice of austerity. Unfortunately, the people of this age of Kali do not even know the meaning of austerity. Under these circumstances, the Lord has appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to bestow upon the fallen souls the easiest meth method of self-realization, technically called Chaito Darpana Marginam, cleansing of the dirt from the core of one's heart. This method is extremely simple. Anyone can chant the glorious Krishna Sankirtan, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. In this age, there are different forms of so-called advanced scientific knowledge, such as anthropology, Marxism, Freudism, nationalism, and industrialism. But if we work very hard under their guidance, and in instead of adopting the process practiced by Nara Narayan, we shall waste our valuable human form of life. Thus we shall certainly be cheated and misled. Om Gyanat Vidandasya Kinanjana Shalakaya Chakshudan Malita Minita Sma Shigrivinam Ha Pakam Kariva Chalam Pangam Langai Tegrim Yakriba the Maham Bande Shigrun Diditaranam Bancha Kopdubishta Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitanam Pavani Bil Vaishnavi Bilamaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupanityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasati Guru Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Okay, so translation again. The glories of the Supreme Person Shukadev Goswami continued. The glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are inconceivable. He has appeared in the form of Nara Narayan in the land of Bharat Varsha. 
at the place known as Badikashram to favor his devotees by teaching them religion, knowledge, renunciation, spiritual power, sense control, and freedom from false ego. He is advanced in the opulence of spiritual assets, and he engages in executing austerity until the end of this millennium. This is the process of self realization. So the different uh, incarnations of Krishna, they come to reestablish the um, religion, come to teach. Of course, you have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is a very special, uh, special form because He's uh, taking the role, right? Krishna and the mood of Srimati Radharani taking the role of a devotee. It's very special. Uh, yeah, unique. Um, but all of the different forms of Krishna, they have a similar mission, and that is to teach. Um, just as Krishna... Uh, teaches also the devotees. The devotees also have a similar mission of of Krishna to teach. Um, and sometimes in propagating Krishna consciousness, Srila Prabhupada would he would he initiated quite a lot of disciples. Um, almost five thousand, kind of rounded up to five thousand. But um, I mean nowadays there's. I don't know what Jai Pataka Swami has now. He's saying over 50,000. Um, anyway, so there's a number of gurus in this, in ISKCON that have quite a few uh, disciples. Of course, they've been initiating uh, much longer than Srila Prabhupada initiated. He only initiated for about, what, 12 years? more or less, a little more than 12 years, because he initiated a few devotees, I think, before he came to America. Maybe one, a few, anyways. So, but we see that um, out, of, out of a lot of, out of those disciples, um, of course, it's hard to know exactly how much all of them are practicing. Um, because just because one's not going to a temple or they, in other words, some personalities may be practicing, like Prabhupada disciples may be practicing, but li living reclusive lives, not not by a temple, but they're sincerely, seriously practicing. Maybe they have an association of a few devotees in their small town. <laughs> Interesting, Bhakta Bob, who moved out to, where is he living? Arizona, I think it's Arizona. All right, well, somewhere like this, same difference, right? Anyways, uh, he's living out, but it's, it's quite remote, and not he doesn't have many neighbors, and you know, people they move out there, they kind of get away from people, and they have huge, they have huge uh, pieces of land, right? So he has quite some acres out there. I don't know how many acres he has, but so he was. Uh, He's, he was living out there. He's living out there. Then he he drove by this um, property, and out on the in front of the sign it said 108. He was thinking 108, like maybe these people are devotees. So then he met them, uh, the owners, and actually he's a devotee. He's a Prabhupada disciple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Bhakta Bob and this Prabhupada disciple they had lunch recently together, and but it's interesting. They're like really close to each other. So, yeah, you never know how much somebody's practicing just because. But we could say for sure, because we know for sure, that some of them did fall away, like really fell away. Um, means they, they gave up the chanting of 16 rounds minimum. Um, they uh, gave up following the regulative principles and just went back to their sinful life. Um, so in the process of propagating religion or making disciples or making followers or encouraging devotees to surrender their lives to Krishna, sometimes people, they become devotees and they go the opposite direction, unfortunately.
Um, Shreshvar won't go the opposite direction, though. Right? You're just going towards Krishna, right? So, um, so yeah, it's unfortunate. But it's something that uh, is, is a reality. Um, there's one particular case of a Srila Prabhupada disciple. I was actually just reading about him last night. I, I, I didn't mean to read about him, but it just happened. He happened to come up. And Hari Shari's trans, Hari Shari, Hari Shari's Transcendental Diary, um, Volume One, and Sri the Prabhupada is in Vrindavan. It's a wonderful book, actually. This Hari Shari's Transcendental Diary. There's, a, I don't know, I think there's five of them. It's it's, it's wonderful because Hari Shari is writing. He, he's Sri the Prabhupada's assistant servant, and he's writing um, a daily diary his travels with Prabhupada, what's happening, what's going on. and It's, it's amazing. Anyway, so in this particular account, Hari Shari is mentioning how Akshayananda Swami, those of you who know him, probably most of you don't, but Akshayananda Swami, he came to Srila Prabhupada and he said, Srila Prabhupada, there's this very nice devotee, uh, Prithu, Prithu Putra Prabhu, and I think he should take sannyas. And Srila Prabhupada said, Oh, why, why should he take sannyas? And then Hari Shari said, or then uh, Akshayananda Swami said, Well, to, so he could have more f f facility for preaching. That's always the answer, right? <laughs> why do you want to take sannyas? It's like a preach for. Um, so Srila Prabhupada said, He wasn't really um, ex accepting this his proposal. And then, but Akshayananda Swami kept on pushing Prabhupada. But Prabhupada, he's very, you know, sincere. And, and then Prabhupada said, let him go to America and let him travel with Tamal Krishna Goswami in the Radha Damodar party. Let him get trained for a year, and then we'll see. But then Akshayananda Swami was saying, oh, but Prabhupada, he's, he's been here for many years in India, and he's very dependable, and we should just give him sannyas. And Prabhupada said, okay, fine. Prabhupada agreed. And actually, the sannyas ceremony was going to be the next day. Not too long of a waiting list, huh? It's going, to be the, it's going to be the next day um, in Vrindavan. And these two devotees were going to get initiated, Sridhar Brahmachari and um, Lokanath Brahmachari. Yeah, they, they were going to get sannyas also, these two devotees from, from, from Bombay. So anyways, uh, they, the, next, they, they, the next day came, and then Srila Prabhupada gave them all sannyas, Prithuputra Prabhush, uh, Became Prithu, Prithu, uh, Prithu Putra Swami, Sridhar Swami, Lokana Swami. And sh interesting, Sridhar Prabhupada, he, he, of course, he told all the sannyasis you should preach, that should be your main focus. But he also told the sannyasis uh, he recommended you should chant more rounds. Interesting. But, um, but, anyways, fast forward, Prithu, Prithu Putra Prabhu, uh, Swami, he did a lot of service for Sridhar Prabhupada. I don't know his history in detail. I mean, there's so many devotees. And somehow, somehow or other, historically speaking, it seems that he wasn't um, a very well-known devotee, like others are well-known, like Tamal Krishna Goswami or other persons like that. But he did a lot of service for Srila Prabhupada, and then Srila Prabhupada left. He... he he departed, right, 1977. And then after that, Prithu Putra Swami, he, he fell away. He gave up the process of Krishna consciousness. He stopped chanting. He engaged, gave up the principles, and he just went back to his sinful life. Um, but one thing is that he never criticized uh, never criticized, it's kind of never criticized Srila Prabhupada. And never became critical of the process of bhakti. And he never criticized his spiritual master or the devotees. He just engaged in his sinful life. Um, so, and then, um, eventually, he, he uh, contracted AIDS. And um, he, he was practically dying at a, at a hospital, and he was hooked up to all these machines uh, just to help him breathe. And um, 
And eventually he went into, how do you say? He went into coma. Not a coma. He went into coma. He went to in a coma. Okay. <laughs> he went to in a coma. Anyways. And then he, uh, yeah, just uncut. And then the doctors were surrounding his bed. And they were thinking, all right, so he'll probably leave a, live a few more weeks or maybe a few more days. And that's what they were thinking. They were talking about him. So while they were talking about him, all of a sudden he opens his eyes and he, and he sits up in the bed and then he says, he says, Sri the Prabhupada, you came. And then he closes his eyes. He, 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 lays, he lays back in his bed and just leaves, you know, passes away right there. The doctors told this story later. Um, there's also another, there's also other devotees who had a similar experience. This devotee, those of you who know him, uh, Sudama Swami, he also had a similar, practically in terms of, you know, falling away from Krishna consciousness, also a similar experience in Srila Prabhupada coming. Um, but one thing is that they never became offensive. They just became, means they never became offensive towards Srila Prabhupada in terms of criticizing him or his followers, but they just had weakness of heart. Prithu, Prithu Swami had weakness of heart and he fell away. But Prabhupada came. <laughs> um, so, You also have the case of uh, Srila Prabhupada made a very interesting statement about all of his god brothers. <laughs> because most of the time when when devotees in ISKCON think about Srila Prabhupada's god brothers, I mean, of course, not all of them, but a, maj a large number of them, Srila Prabhupada's own statements, they weren't helpful to Srila Prabhupada to say the least. They were very critical of Srila Prabhupada and offensive. Um, and Prabhupada would say some heavy statements about them, actually. It, he, would, he, he actually recorded them in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, they're written there. But one time, Srila Prabhupada was walking with one disciple, and the disciples started becoming critical of Srila Prabhupada's godbrothers. And then Prabhupada stopped, and he, and he told this disciple of his, he says, he said, I could criticize, you cannot criticize my God brothers. And he said, uh, my spiritual master is so merciful, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, so merciful. Just as Putana, just as Putana came to kill Krishna, and then Krishna brought her back to Godhead, he said, my spiritual master is so merciful that he's going to take, he's taking all of my God brothers back to Godhead. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so, um, so the, so the idea being is that yesterday, because it was being brought up, that, okay, Hanuman and the squirrel, the squirrel was working according to, to its capacity, and, the, and Hanuman was working towards, its capa towards his capacity. But Ramchandra accepted both of them equally. Why? Because they're working according to their capacity. Um, and uh, the spiritual master... And Krishna, they, they, they don't forget the service that, that's offered. This is, these are the two examples. Prithu, Putra, Swami. Prabhupada didn't forget um, the service he rendered. And um, also Srila Prabhupada, given the example of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and, and Srila Prabhupada's God Brothers, means that he he didn't he won't forget Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur won't forget um, their service. So so it's an important point to cons uh, to to consider or to uh, remember. Now of course <laughs> that shouldn't say okay great all right I'll just engage in some devotional service for some years and I'll merge into sinful activity and then my spiritual master will come and save me. All right. Um, like, right, they'd bring that up to Prabhupada. Oh, okay, so that means if, if, uh, 
what do you call it, Jamil, he just named his son Narayan, right? Engaged in a bunch of sinful activity. And then right at the end, he was saved. Or he was given a chance. And then and eventually he was delivered. So I could just do the same. But um, we can't cheat Krishna. So we may be able to cheat others. We may be able to cheat ourselves. Right? But we can't cheat Krishna. So if we're having such calculated mentality, it doesn't work like that. Um, but these devotees, they served, they gave their life to Prabhupada, right? At least a portion of it. But due to weakness of heart, they fell away. They weren't calculating, okay, let me fall into sinful activity, and then later Prabhupada's going to come save me, right? There's a difference. One is calculating. It's like a planned, sinful, calculating, <laughs> cheating. And the other one's just weakness of heart. There's a difference. So, no way of uh, getting around it. <laughs> um, so, Nar Narayan and other great uh, personalities, they come to teach religion, uh, renunciation, spiritual power, sense control, freedom from false ego. The spiritual master also comes for that purpose. But sometimes people become deviated. Um, so it's not a, it shouldn't be a surprise when people do. Um, but the idea, of course, is that we are supposed to learn from others' mistakes. That's the point of hearing. Why are we hearing so much? Because we want to get it, you get, we, we want the message to become, uh, what do you call, cemented in our consciousness. We want it to become fixed in our consciousness, the message of Bhagavatam. Um, because the message of Bhagavatam, there's so many, in the message of Bhagavatam, or the, yeah, the, the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's so many um, cases in which we can learn from, like Ajamil, Bharat Maharaj, there's so many cases, right, which we can learn. So we're not just supposed to hear these, oh, very good, this is entertaining, or this is not entertaining, or this is boring, or we're supposed to hear them and learn from them. That's the whole, that's, that's the whole point, to hear and learn. Uh, not just to hear, but to, to memorize and to meditate on and to apply in our lives. And similarly, as we, just as we could learn from the Bhagavatam, the history of the Bhagavatam, we could also learn from the history of Iskhan, or the history, or we could learn from devotees' mistakes, and we should. What works, what doesn't work. Um, so, in order to... Um, in order to be, become successful, we must be very serious about self-realization and the practice of austerity. And as Srila Prabhupada is saying here, unfortunately, people this age do not even know the meaning of austerity. Um, and under the circumstances, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's appeared to deliver the fallen souls by the method of Harinam, uh, chanting Hare Krishna. So this is the process. Um, and in the process of serving Krishna or chanting the holy names and worshiping Krishna and this and that, we don't want any cookie cutter. Is it cookie cutter? It depends on what you want to say. Yeah, it depends. What am I trying to say here? <laughs> cookie cutter devotees? Is that it? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh? Well, I was thinking, like, cookie cutter is like, okay, in the kitchen, those of you who have made cookies. It's, it's nice sometimes to make those different types of cookies, right? People fall, oh, look it, it's a star cookie. It's a heart, like, like uh, Lakshman, he makes heart donuts. Go, oh, great, it's a heart donut, right? It's not just a donut, it's a heart donut. <laughs> Anyways, so, <laughs> heart pories on accident. <laughs> sometimes devotees make Texas pories on accident as well. You know, looks like the state of Texas, the pori, instead of being circular, right? Um... So, uh, 
So it means it's just the same. It's just like, okay, here's the dough. Okay, stamp, 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 stamp. Okay, they all, they all look the same, right? But as Srila Prabhupada would quote, right, or as the saying goes, uh, variety is the mother of enjoyment. In other words, and variety is, is we're not mayavadis. <laughs> variety is, we're all about variety. The spiritual world's all about variety. Um, like I'm just, like there was this devotee, <laughs> Ayanjur Prabhu, he was, you know, the 24-hour kirtan leader there in Vrindavan. I'm sure everybody knows of him. But um, he was unique in many ways, but and his and his thought and his uh, way he would lead kirtan and the way he would speak, very you know, unique person, devotee. But not only how he would speak and lead kirtan, but how he would dress. <laughs> you know, usually devotees dress more or less the same, right? At least the brahmacharis or sannyasis more or less the same. Householders have a little bit more uh, uh, leeway, right? Cow kirtas and whatever, this kirta, that kirta. I'm not making, whatever, whatever people want to do, it's their lives. But, um, but, but Ayanjur Prabhu, um, he would dress, anyway, it's very interesting how he would dress. It was like almost like one piece of cloth wrapped around his body. Anyways, so one devotee showed up to the 24-hour kirtan dressed like him, like, like young devotee, you know, young man. Because he had a lot of young men who were taking shelter of him, but so one young man dressed up like practically like him, <laughs> and then Ayanjur Prabhu saw him and he said, he, he told this young man, he said, "You be you, and I'll be me." <laughs> In other words, you don't have to imitate me. You know, we're, we're different. You know, I'll, I'll dress a certain way, you dress a certain way. It's you know, personality. Um, so, of course, there may be general ways in which we dress. There may be general ways in which we lead kirtan, um, in which we serve Krishna. But there is room for some individual expression uh, <clears throat> within reason. It's like, hey, Prabhu, I want to I wanna lead the Guru Puja in my kopan. Well, I don't know about that. You know, it's a little too much. Too much individual expression, you know. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Did he notice he lost his daddy? Oh, it kept on going. <laughs> Said Vijay Prabhu is saying a devotee was leading Kirtan, he lost his dhoti. And then he, And he kept on leading, and then one devotee had to come up and tie his dhoti. That's when you know it's a good kirtan when you lose your dhoti, right? <laughs> or you just don't know how, to, or you just didn't tie your dhoti well enough. Um, so there's within reason there's room for that. Um, so we shouldn't uh, think that we have to be all the same in every respect. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but, but, but whatever our service, whatever our individuality means, um, however, we just, however we end up serving Krishna this way, that way, this way, that way, um, all devotees have in common that they need to take shelter of the holy names. Right? There may be a farmer devotee, a Sankirtan devotee, a this devotee, that devotee, Pujari cook, whatever, car mechanic devotee. Uh, but they all have to have the same thing in common, that is they need to take shelter of the holy names, because that's what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming to, uh, to uh, give us, the holy names of Krishna. And aside from them taking shelter of the holy names of Krishna, they don't take shelter of all these other isms, like Prabhupada mentions here, Marxism, Freudism, Freudi oh sorry, Freudianism, nationalism, industrialism, all these isms. Why? Because these are just meant for the crows. They're not meant for the swans, these different isms. Um, Prabhupada said the crows fly very high, right? Not the crows, excuse me. 
Vultures, sorry. Crows, vultures. Okay. <laughs> the vultures fly very high, right? And they have very great seeing power. They could see, I don't know, how many miles? T seven miles. That's a long, that's, I mean, that's a long, imagine if you could see seven miles. I mean, so they have this very high, but what is their, what is their aim? Prabhupada said, corpse, dead body. So Prabhupada would say that, Srila Prabhupada would say that, okay, all this advancement, this and that, but what's the, what's the, what's the aim? If the aim is not God-realization, if the aim is not self-realization, it's just like a vulture going for a corpse. It's, it's, it's useless. It's, it's, it's not, um, it's not uh, what humans are supposed to do. So all these different isms, um, they have failed to provide any happiness, any real happiness. And on the contrary, they've just created a lot of problems and frustrations and, and, and uh, destruction. So, so the devotees, they just say, okay, I'm giving up all these isms and I'm surrendering to the holy names of Krishna and I'm taking shelter of Srila Prabhupada. But in the process, uh, I'm serving Krishna, how um, it may be in a different way than somebody else. Like the devotees who dress the deities. If you... Uh, if you, uh, you'll see that devotees dress the deities in different ways. It's not all the same. Um, and Srila Prabhupada says at the end of the purport that if we, uh, if we follow these different isms, if we get absorbed, because devotees could also get absorbed in these isms. It's not that, hey, I'm a Vaishnava or I'm a Vaishnavi. Uh, lady Vaishnava, lady devotee. Um, it's not that they cannot fall into these isms. They can fall in these to these isms. It's not that hey, I'm a devotee. I'm free from the isms. Well, not exactly. Not necessarily. We could also fall into the isms while being a devotee at the same time. So, but but Srila Prabhupada said so many times, just give up all the isms and surrender to Krishna. That's, that's the sure path. Uh, marry the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Marry the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. For those of you, for those devotees who won't marry, means marry as everybody usually uh, thinks of marriage, means marry another person. Um, for those who won't, Srila Prabhupada makes an interesting statement here. What, what, what verse in purport was that? That was just recently. I think it was six. One that you spoke on, right? Yeah. Srila Prabhupada says, uh, By his personal example, Lord Ramachandra taught the devotees that it is better not to enter to marry life, which is certainly followed by many tribulations. Interesting. <laughs> so we're not going to get into all that, but right now, but means explaining that. But for those who don't marry another person, they have to marry the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or else it's not going to work. It means they're not going to be able to remain um, brahmachari or sannyasi or whatever vana or whatever it is. Brahmachari sannyasi. They won't be able to remain like that because you have to marry something. You marry another person, and of course, there's so many great devotees who are, are, are married and devotees, so I'm not trying to you know, put anyone down, but um, just speaking f from a, the Brahmachari point of view is that they have to marry the mission. And even if for those who <laughs> make it married later, they still have to marry the mission. <laughs> But definitely those who, who don't get married to another person, they have to, like, absolutely, or else it's just not going to work. So, all right. Does anybody have any? Uh, yes, Devavretta Prabhu. One pending? About cheating ourselves 
I just wanted to relate a story that Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur used to say. Is it okay? Yes. So uh, there was once a story of this uh, this guy. He would come, and he he knew that there was like a blacksmith, and the blacksmith would melt down metal and like make jewelry. So this guy was like, you know, I'm gonna gather up a bunch of like cheap pots, and I'm gonna I'm gonna melt it down, and then I'm gonna get some money from you know, sell it off and I mean, you cheat this blacksmith. So he like gathered up all these crummy pots around town, you know, like it's like a low class metal, like aluminum, nothing against aluminum, but you know, something like aluminum and like low class metals. And then, um, he brought it to the blacksmith and he melted it down and he made some tools. So he's like, all right, I'm going to go sell these tools in the market. And so before he tried selling it in the market, he tried like using the shovel and it broke immediately. And so he went back to the blacksmith. He's like, hey, you rascal. <laughs> I gave you all these metals and you didn't even give me tools that work. He's like, well, the, the metal you gave me was a piece of crap. He's like, what do you expect? So Bhakti Sananta Saraswati makes the point that you know, the intention that we have for serving for the spiritual master that the only thing that gets cheated is ourselves. You know, we can approach the spiritual master with like the wrong intentions, but those intentions are ultimately the things that backfire on us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, it's... Um, we get what we... Yaya tamam prapadyate tamsataiva bhajami hum Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that as they surrender to me, I reward them accordingly. So how we approach the spiritual master, he reciprocates accordingly. If we do not want pure devotional service, then why should we? I mean, Krishna says, right, or Rupa Goswami has mentioned in the Nectar Devotion that it's very rare to obtain pure devotional service. And it specifically says it's rarely given um, by Krishna. So especially if somebody's not wanting pure devotional service, they're definitely not going to get it. Because um, they have to want it, right? Krishna bhakti rasata, right? That greed has to be there. Um, and even then, it's not just because we want something, right? Krishna doesn't have to give it. But, but anyways, he does reciprocate accordingly. Um, just like I was mentioning some time ago about how I was standing next to Jayadvaita Swami, my good fortune. Um, but a lot of people, they're coming up to him and taking, wanting to take pictures with him. And I asked Maharaj, I said, how do you like this, Maharaj? And he said, oh, I just, I learned how to deal with it. And, and, um, and I was telling him how one disciple of Shivaram Swami was telling me that Shivaram Swami really doesn't like it. He thinks it's way too informal and, um, yeah, just kind of kitty, and he just doesn't like it. So, anyways, but Jayad Vedic said, yeah, I just accept it. And, and he said, whatever. So, and then, but then he w went on to say that. He said, yeah, sometimes that's all people want from me. They just want a picture. He said, they don't want spiritual knowledge. They don't want uh, some advice, whatever, some blessings for something, you know, good they want to do. They just want that. Or you have people, they come up to you and, oh, my knee hurts. Swami, my knee hurts. Can you please... Can you please uh, cure me, right? So there's different things. Um, so yeah, the, the spiritual master reciprocates accordingly. Does anybody have any other uh, questions or comments? Yeah. I was just uh, reading, uh, looking into uh, Yamuna's biography. Yesterday, it's a really incredible book. And she describes in one wonderful detail how the movement really took hold in San Francisco during the beginning months of 67, when Prabhupada came and they had that mantra rock dance and the thing just, you know. And the way she described it is that it was, it was, it grew out of Srila Prabhupada's relationship with everybody. He was so friendly and welcoming and, and blissful and that's, and the attraction to Prabhupada 
uh, was the was the was the uh, dynamic force that um, really made that that whole thing grow. And then when he went back to uh, New York, and you may recall the history, then he had the stroke at the end of May on Memorial Day, and uh, there was such an and, and then the appeal went out to chant as much as possible, and they had this 12-hour kirtan throughout the night in San Francisco, and I think in New York also, but they had more people chanting. And, and Yamuna describes how at 2 o'clock in the morning, she's chanting the whole time. I mean, not leading, but chanting. And uh, she felt as uh, a difference, as a, a change in the atmosphere, and she felt that, uh, in her heart, oh, this, now Prabhupada is going to make it. He's going to survive and you know, go on. And, and uh, he, he did miraculously and you know, was able to. Because the prayer was, uh, my spiritual master hasn't completed his work. But what I'm getting at is that the, the, the dynamic force of the relationship with the guru, we sing every morning, Sri Guru Chadanarate Ese Yutamagati. Attraction for the lotus feet of the, love for the lotus feet of the guru is the, uh, the, the most powerful way to reach the, the uh, gati, the, the goal. So it is, it is very much um, this relationship with, with, with Srila Prabhupada that came through at the end for those two devotees you mentioned. I, was, I didn't know about Prita Putra, although he was famous, I remember him. Uh, I didn't meet him, but, but uh, Sudama was even more famous. Yeah. And that, that you know, Prabhupada, uh, despite all of their deviation, he appreciated so much it came through, you know, at, at the yeah. end. Yeah. Yeah, this story from about Prithu Putra, Prabhu, this was from, uh, related by another Srila Prabhupada disciple, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta. Um, that Prabhupada disciple. I don't know where he is. Yeah, Bhakti. Yeah, it was related. It was by him. So. And Sudama also had an experience where Prabhupada came? Yeah, Sudama, what happened, he, he had a similar, he, 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 he deviated from, he, he left Krishna consciousness and he, you know, was having trouble following the principles, this and that. And he, I think he also contracted AIDS and he was there in Los Angeles. And then, yeah, similar thing. Prabhupada, he said, oh, Prabhupada, you came. Similar. I didn't know about that, but uh, I, I heard that his mother was there. Oh. His was By his side at the time. And she was encouraged, go to Prabhupada, go to Prabhupada, mm. you know, like, because <laughs> he must have expressed them that Prabhupada is here. Yeah, actually, in terms of Prabhupada saying, oh, Prabhupada, you came, I uh, revert, I uh, take that statement, because I, I don't actually know for sure, but I, I do know that he was in Los Angeles, and he had a very auspicious departure. I mean, devotees were there surrounding him, having kirtan, and the whole thing, you know, it's like... That that's very auspicious. Like it's not that oh he he, uh, he left and he engaged in sinful activity and then he just you know died in a hotel and and in New York or something you know excuse me but yeah before it, it was that very he auspicious was, before that he was in San Francisco and he was just in some dingy place you know low class area and one devotee went and found him mm. and brought him to Los Angeles yeah and yeah the devotees. Take care of it. Yeah, it's very auspicious, you know. I mean, Tirtamaj told me that there's this kind of the opposite, uh, opposite case in which this devotee, he was, he had a bit of a, I mean, he was struggling with sinful life, but anyway, so he was trying to make his way to Vrindavan because his last days were there, but he, coming, but yeah, somehow he really just didn't make it. Just didn't make it. You know. um, of course, you got the example of Brahmananda Prabhu. He was telling the devotees, I, I want to leave in Vrindavan. And he lived in Vrindavan for many years. And then somehow or other, I don't know how, but the devotees or someone, they wanted to take him to Delhi. And he was just like on his last hours or last days and then they're walking out to the car, this and that, or whatever, and then he just he passed. He, he left his body in Vrindavan, but he, they're kind of on the way to go to Delhi, but it was still in Vrindavan. Actually, I don't even think they got in the car. I think he just. So, anyways, um, all right. I think there's one on Zoom. 
Yes, a baller and Prabhu, may I? Yes. Yes, then the bad pronouns Prabhu. My question is, what is the gain for me if I glorify someone who is inconceivable? Even if this inconceivable person is God, it, it seems like walking in the dark, like risking to be captured by even the worst type of danger. Please? What are the any of the devotees in the audience have a something they like to say about this? Yes, I'd like to say something. Okay. Can you please clarify the question? Uh, I will repeat the question. Uh, what is the gain for me, uh, Dravida Prabhu? Sorry. What is the gain for me if I glorify someone who is inconceivable, even if this inconceivable person is God? Uh, it seems like walking in the dark, like risking to be captured by even the worst type of danger. Please? Mm. Well, what I would say is that you, you need, whatever you do in, in, in Krishna consciousness, including glorification, has to be done under the instruction of a bona fide guru, which means one who's following uh, the disciple succession and is personified Shastra. So there's so many things that are inconceivable. I mean, this, just probably, you know, get even to chant Hare Krishna. You know, I mean, there was this, this faith. Oh my God, maybe I'll chant and I'll become controlled and paralyzed. You know, and there's so many doubts you can have. And I'm sure there were plenty of people who decided not to chant Hare Krishna um, to their great dis misfortune. So the thing is, the whole process is inconceivable, it's true. But Krishna uh, reaches out in such a way through these great acharyas, through the deity, through the holy name, through the prasadam and the association, so that we, we take a leap of faith and we engage in the process. And the advantage is that by actually doing it sincerely, that you get a result, that, you've, that, 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 that it, it works, and you can feel it working is that you're becoming more peaceful, you're becoming detached, and you're becoming, you know, and joyful, whatever, you know. And so, that's, the, the advantage is, is that you, you be begin your devotional life. Of course it's inconceivable. That's why Chris is called at Hokshija. He's at Hokshija. It means that he's beyond the range of our senses and mind. So it takes faith, and that faith is always in, in, in uh, comes through a person. So this is why the, the importance of the, uh, the Acharya and all the devotees, you know, can give you, well, I was just like you, but now I gave up my, my, my sinful activities, I'm much happier and more peaceful, and the person actually manifests those qualities. And so, that, so the, 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 the answer is that we do all kinds of things that we don't know the result of. We engage in things, and many times on the material side, they have very bad reactions. But uh, taking, the, taking the leap of faith, if you, if you will, for the, for the inconceivable truth of the soul and, and God and the science of Krishna consciousness, uh, it's all auspicious. And you can see by the, by the result. Now we can see the manifestation, and, and Prabhupada would always say, just see my, my disciples, they were the hippies, dirty, lying on the street, you know, and now they're like jubilant dancing peacocks, you know, and even the the other uh, ministers and leading religions, and they said, oh, these are our men, these are our people. Now they're mad after God, what happened, you know? And so that's, the answer is, is that uh, uh, it's, it's, it's worth uh, taking that leap of faith and glorifying the inconceivable. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Dravida Prabhu. Uh, 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 if, if I may, Balaram Prabhu, uh, as to be expected, Dravida Prabhu, uh, 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 very helpful, Brilliant, outstanding answer to my question. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Yeah, about that leap of faith that Javita Prabhu made, just a very small, short point that uh, Prabhupada, I was listening to a lecture recently, and he said, he said, oh, we're willing to try so many things. We, we try to be happy in so many ways, this way, that way, this way, that, so many ways, but we're not, but, but the problem is we're not willing to try to serve Krishna and try to be happy that way. We'll try so many ways, anything but serving Krishna. As the Prabhupada is saying, um, 
lecture. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that is a great so, point. So, so people are taking a leap of faith on the on the on the, on the material and material life. Well, why not take a leap of faith in spiritual life? You know, it's not just oh, it's in the darkness. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, let's take the leap of faith, as Javita Prabhu is mentioning. Lastly, Sutapa is how about Sutapa, Sutapa, Prabhu. Um, tomorrow, Sunday, uh, 2 a.m. our time, if those, any of those want to get up and watch, but you can watch it later. He'll be accepting sannyas from Kadamba Kanana Swami in London. So it's good. It's, it's very good. It's, it's, it's a, it's a um, what do you call it? A victory. Yeah, leap of faith. Also victory for, for the movement when such devotees do that. Um, so, for those of you who want to tune in at 2 a.m., go for it. If not, you can watch it later. But, all right. Grantraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Jai.